I wanted to start my comments off today by recognizing the incredible loss of life that we have experienced over the last several weeks, an incalculable loss, as the New York Times has called it in Sunday's paper. As a doctor, I know that even one life is a life, is one life lost, is one life too many. Nearly overnight, we learned that we had to change our behaviors. And to do that, we did it to make sure that we would minimize further loss of life. I am proud that our communities took decisive action to flatten the curve, and that we as the state, as well as our federal government, took swift action to provide emergency assistance for our communities. What we have learned over the last several weeks is that now we should be the entrusted people by the public to help to provide the guidance, the foresight, and the assistance that is needed to ensure that our communities emerge stronger than ever. The harsh reality is that, our, that this pandemic has quickly eroded our reserves. It has decimated our small businesses. It has forced hardworking people out of a job. It has created realities for our working parents who are now forced to homeschool their children at home. It has exacerbated the disparities and inequities that our most vulnerable populations have already felt over the last several weeks, I have heard from the LAO, from finance and members of the administration, what our response has been to the COVID-19 crisis. And what we learned early on is that while response was necessary, recovery will be vital. Not only medical recovery from COVID-19, but economic recovery that will help us move forward as quickly as possible and get our businesses back online and our children back in the classroom. I wanna be clear that as chair of the budget subcommittee on health and human services, that my priorities will always be in protecting our most vulnerable populations, among them the children, the disabled, immigrants, and our elders. I am proud that in recent years, our state has prioritized the expansion of healthcare for our immigrant communities. First, for healthcare for all kids, next, healthcare for all young adults, and this year, health care for all elder adults. Our family and child welfare programs have also helped us to strengthen CalWORKs for our families. And at this same time, we have been able to invest in our health care infrastructure, investing to bring much needed doctors and nurses to our communities and increasing preventative health care benefits that improve health care outcomes. All of this work has created resiliency in our state and we cannot lose that resiliency. Members, as many of you know, my home district is one of the poorest in the state. We are blessed with a can-do attitude, a rich diversity of cultures, and the best produce in the world, but we are still recovering from the last recession and from decades of built-in disparities. In many ways, we are not only the geographic center of our state, but we are also the epicenter of the economic and medical well-being of our state. And that is why I urge us to look for resiliency that will carry us through the revenue losses and health care deficiencies Randall. that we find ourselves battling. I urge us to support programs that will uplift all working families, such as the inclusion of Cal EITC for immigrants, protections for elder adults, and smart investments in our health care that, that don't leave behind our most vulnerable. Let's make sure that we take care of all of our families in this budget. This is a California for all, after all. Thank you.